What's going on everybody? It's your man Cleveland Terry and today we are finally going to review it's been a long time coming, but I finally got a chance to sit down and actually talk about this product. That is the Reloop Mixon 8 Pro. How does it stack up with everybody else? Is it a good board? And is it something that I recommend? Let's talk about it. All right, once again, welcome out. If you're new here, this is what we talk about, all things DJ related. That means gig logs, that means DJ 101, that means DJ tech reviews. If that's something that you wanna get into, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you follow me on all of my social media because I do different things on every single social media. So, let's get down to it. This has been about two years in the making, I think. I think they introduced the Mixon 8 um, at NAM. 2022, because we're in 23 now. So NAM 2022, they came out with this and uh, it got a lot of fanfare. A lot of people were excited about it because it does something that a lot of other controllers don't do. Algorithm DJ and Serato, and of course Virtual DJ if you want to get into that too. But by default, it does come with Algorithm DJ and Serato built in. Obviously you just need to add your iPad or you add your computer. So for a lot of people, that is a wonderful option. I mean, it gives you the ability to use Serato if that's what you like to do. And then also if you wanted to dabble in the DJ or if you wanted a backup system, well, now you have it. Two in one gives you everything you need. What more to want? This is why we're here. We're gonna talk about it. So we're gonna go through this whole system. We're gonna talk about the aesthetics. We're gonna talk about the inputs and outputs. We're gonna talk about the software, how it works with the system, and then of course, just my general feel and vibe of it. What I like, what I don't like, we're gonna talk about all those things today. First and foremost, we do have a dedicated four channel mixer, and of course you do have your four faders along with four paddles, four effects paddles. Nobody else is doing that, so I really appreciate them adding this to the mix. It gives you far more control over everything you're doing, and then we'll talk about some of the ways that you can implement it uh, on a go forward when we get into the details. But we'll talk about the center of this thing right off the bat. Uh, the layout, pretty normal, pretty much what you would expect. Up top here, we do have our standard pots, your trim knob, your high, your medium, your low, and then your low pass filter. Moving up, we have our ability to load the decks. We have load prepare, instant double, and then we have our channel select. This one is your dedicated mic one then your USB-A, USB-B, and then line if you wanna go in with a, a phono or a CDJ or something like that. Move over to the middle here. We have our master controls, our main volume, our booth, our Q, our Q mix. This is our volume, our mix, and then our dedicated sampler, and then our browse knob, which allows us to go through all of your catalogs, your crates. We do have the option right up front here to change from stereo to mono. You don't have to go into software, it's right there dedicated. I do absolutely love that there's a dedicated switch for that. Now, we move down and then we have our headphone monitors here. This doubles as your BPM tap, which is definitely needed. Also, it's found up here too. And then we move all the way down to our paddles. Now, our paddles are actually really, really good. They feel good, they click on nicely, they have a nice spring load. They feel a lot like, um, I wanna say, the, the rain mixers. Followed down by your faders, long, long up faders, love that. Then you have your ability to switch between A and B or throughput, similar to any other system out there. Moving over to the middle, as we just talked about all the pots, all of these things, then we drop down, we have our meters, followed by the ability to use split Q. Another switchable switch, I love that that's in there. Okay, let's move over to the side here. We're gonna talk about this side since this side's being blocked by my screen. Uh, we move over here, we have a nice quality jog wheel. Now this, I will say right off the bat, I'm very impressed with the jog wheels. They feel really good and I didn't have any issue using them along with the crossfader. There's no indication of what the crossfader is, but it's a good crossfader. So I'm not gonna talk anything poorly about it. I loved it, it, would, it gave me the ability to do scratches and all those things that I'd love to do uh, right off of this fader, even though there's a nondescript here. Uh, moving back up to the jogs. Again, jogs are really good. They feel good. They're nice and weighty. And um, I had no issue with them. Moving over to your jog, you do have what USB it's in, what deck you're using, your time, your BPM. 
and then your percentage over here, and then obviously what your range is, and I'm at plus eight. If you wanted to change it, all you have to do is hold down shift and then press the pitch and it will switch to the necessary range. It goes eight, 16, and 50. Moving up to the top here, you do have your effects. And if you remember the SX2, SX3, that's a lot what these are like. You do have your three possible effects and then your mode. We'll talk about that a little later, but you have your effects knobs and then your beat parameter right up here. And it is a click knob. Now, on the upper levels here, you do have your microphone one with the talk over and microphone two with the talk over. So if you were trying to figure out where the mics are, you actually have a strip channel for each mic, mic one and mic two. So if you're using them, you are going to lose the ability to obviously use these particular uh, channels, but you get two mic channels. And if you're not using the two mic channels and you're only using just the controller and maybe you have another mixer, well then you have access to all four channels. And this actually comes into play when you are trying to either switch over or utilize more than one type of uh, controller, whether it be DJ or Serato. Over on the side here, pitch faders, nice, long travel. No center click, but they do have the marker to let you know that you've hit zero, but nice long faders. Really, really appreciate it. And they're smooth. They are so, so smooth. Big fan of these. We do have our key lock. We have our silent cue. And uh, I do want to um, pat myself on the back. I'm not saying that I had anything to do with it, but they came to me at NAMM and said, you're the reason that we put the silent cue in. More importantly, they didn't understand exactly why people would use silent cue. So once they saw my video on silent cue, and by the way, if you wanna look at it, take a look after this video, it's located right here, which will explain why silent cue is invaluable to me, to people like Mojax, to people who use it. Once you use it, it's hard to go back. So we do have our silent cue, and then we have our pitch ranges we just discussed, your auto loop, and then your ability to turn your loop on and active. And then you have your beat parameter for like your loop rolls and all those things. And it's kind of broken down here, defaults to the four. And then you can multiply that by just hitting this button. Coming down, you have additional parameters and then you have a very large sync button <laughs> and then your cue and your play. Now, I do wanna say that the pads on here are Fantastic, they feel good. They're really large as you can see. I didn't expect them to be this big on a, on a controller of this size, but they're very, very large and they feel good. Just like any other pads that you're used to. Uh, moving up, you have your different performance modes, your hot cue, your loop roll, your save loop, your sampler, and then as you hold down shift, your pitch play, your saved flip, your slicer, and your scratch bank, along with your button to change between deck three and deck or deck two and deck four and deck one and deck three on this side. Uh, if you're using Serato, you can obviously assign stems to one of these top rows. Now it doesn't replace all of them, but you do have the option of replacing your uh, loop roll, your sampler and your saved loop. There's also a slicer option in here, but that's on your second pad and who wants that? All right, on the back side we have a master XLR output with master RCAs, followed by a quarter inch booth and four RCA inputs for phono or line external devices. We do have the ability to run both phono and line with a ground knob located right there. Moving over, we have two USB-B ports. Now this is for the iPad, this USB-C, then the power and the power knob, and of course your quarter inch XLR input. On the front side, you do have your quarter inch and mini jack fourth inch headphone input, followed by nothing else on the front except for the microphone two, which is a quarter inch only. You have XLR on one side, quarter inch on the other, and then your crossfader curve. Now I like the crossfader curve because look, if you press it in, it's out of the way. It's not rubbing on anything. It doesn't get in the way. It still turns if you really want to turn it, but for most people, you'll find that this is enough that it's just not in the way. Let's talk about the things that I love. As I just mentioned, the microphone, the crossfader. Excellent, love that about this. Uh, I, love the, I love the giant pads. I love the cue and the play. I don't have any issue with the board. Sound-wise, sound is great. Although, 
I will say that there is a uh, there is a discrepancy between the volume that's coming out of your iPad versus the volume that's coming out of Serato. The iPad is coming in significantly lower no matter what I did. It never really lined up properly. So of course I had to really mess with the trims to get it to, to equal out, but that is one thing. On this controller, you can use pretty much any iOS device. So that's an iPad, that's an iPhone, that's an uh, iPod touch. You can go all the way back to 30 pin. It will work on everything. But for today, we are using the iPad. So let's pop this open. We got Algorithm DJ up. The first thing that I love about this, first thing, it charges the iPad. So you don't have to worry about carrying another cord. You plug it in, you're good. You have nothing to worry about. I love that. I think anything that's USB-C would be great if they could send power to anything that's USB-C going out. But we're not there yet, but we are there with the iPad. Now, as you can see on the iPad, you are dealing with a kind of a good angle, right? But it is limited. Once it's in, that's it. You're not putting it anywhere else. I mean, I guess technically if you wanted to, you could set it up this way. That way it's, uh, where's my face at? It's underneath here. <laughs> That's good to know. Hold on. So you could run it this way vertically and that would work just fine. Although your camera is in the bottom. So if it goes to sleep, well, you're kind of, you're kind of asked out. So I think most people are going to run it horizontally like so. And, uh, again, all of the options are here. If I hit the browse button, you can see it's definitely changing everything on here. And right now I only have on here streaming stuff. So I'm going to be very limited into what I can actually put on this device because I'm not trying to get demonetized. But so we can go through here, we can click the button. That'll, that'll bring us over to our other playlist. Click it again. Now we're right back in here. And when we're ready to load, we just hit the load button, it loads it to that one deck, loads it to that deck so on and so forth. I didn't have a problem with the iPad. Again, the problem with the iPad is not the iPad, it's more DJ and there's nothing wrong with DJ. But the one thing I will say is you are dealing with a limited, uh, a limited area here. So obviously you have no keyboard. I guess you could Bluetooth the keyboard off to the side, but in this instance, we're only talking about using the controller. So we can use the keyboard. We can, again, hit the button, which brings up your keypad. Keypad is easy to use no problem whatsoever. And obviously you can still use swipe and you can still touch the button that you want to touch. I love that. One of the things that, that I don't love is that uh, there's no daylight mode in iOS. I mean, there is one if you go into the settings and change the, like the disability settings, that type of stuff. So you can do a smart invert and then change it white. But they don't have in here just a kind of a default, let me hit this button and now everything that's black is white and so on and so forth. So that's one thing, not the biggest deal, but I did notice that when I was outside in the sunlight, I felt like I had a little more trouble seeing this screen, like it just didn't get bright enough. Obviously, each iPad that comes out gets brighter and brighter, so that's maybe not an issue, but if you're dealing with like an older iPad where it doesn't have the nits to, to really show on a screen, that's going to be a little bit of an issue for you. So that's the one thing I will say. Um, obviously, another thing is you can't really put it in a case. Uh, I have a keyboard case that you guys know I use, a Folio from, from Apple. But if you're just having it in a case, you're probably going to have to take the case off in order to get it in here. Besides that, once it's in, I mean, you do have a lot of space here because I assume it's designed to fit like almost a, even a 12 inch iPad. And that's great. That would give you far more space. But the one thing I will say is that Depending on how you're standing, how you're, how you're sitting, how you're adjusting, this can be a little bit awkward because you don't have the ability to maybe set it up. Maybe the sun is kind of shining right down here and you kind of want to bring it up, but you don't have that option. I guess technically you could like shim something in the back, but that is one of those things. That actually brings me to oh, one of my problems with the system. Now, I was using this at night in the dark and the one thing I will say is for whatever reason, it is extremely hard when it gets really dark out to see this part of the uh, controls. Like you, it just gets lost. I have a picture that I'm gonna show you right here. And what I started to, what started to dawn on me is I was using Serato at the time and my Serato was over here, you know, up on a stand and then I had, this didn't have the iPad up, so it was exceptionally dark. Then it occurred to me, you know what? 
it would be a lot brighter if there was an iPad sitting right here projecting its light onto the actual controls. Because when they're not there, they're definitely hard to see. There's a little more muscle memory that, that has to happen when you're using this guy. I'm sure if this is your only controller, then it's not an issue, but I kept finding myself you know, grabbing the wrong knobs. And obviously you can see that when, when your filter is on, it's blue. When it's off, it's off. But in the darkness, sometimes I just find myself grabbing this knob when I really wanted to grab the base knob and so on and so forth. Also, while I was DJing, uh, I did notice that I had a lot of um, random glitches, specifically in uh, Serato with the effects. And we'll talk about the effects because they're done differently on Serato and, and DJ. I think we need to talk about them a little more. But what I would notice as I was DJing where I would run an effect and the effect was off. I go to load another song and the effect is just on. Baby. It's off. Even though the paddles aren't on, it's just running. So that's one of those little glitchy things. Wasn't the end of the world. How did I solve it? I loaded a new track and then it went away. But I ran into that at least twice in one gig. And um, in the previous gig, I would run it before. It's probably a little issue that needs a firmware fix and then there won't be an issue. Sound is very good on this board. Um, I didn't have any issues with it. I would use this board in any situation. Direct connect from here right into my speakers. I didn't have a single problem. Uh, very good sound card built into it as was the other, the Reloop Elite had a great sound card too. So I, won't ex I didn't expect this to not have a good sound card. All right, so let's move over to the effects. Now, because the effects are different on both systems. When you wanna do an effect, just like on you know, a Pioneer DJ SX2, you're going to select the effect that you want and all of these effects are built in obviously to Serato. They are Serato effects. Did I mention there's Serato effects? There's no onboard effects on this board. Everything is funneled through either Serato effects or DJ effects. So, high pass filter, full kill on the high, but not on the low. Then on the EQ, full kill once you get all three effects done. Now it's full kill. And then we move over to the effects. Uh, we click on here and whatever your default effects are, and in this case, mine is echo. When I click the echo, it becomes active. They are post fader. And then, and then you have your ability to affect the parameters. Now, of course, they don't continue to loop. They will slowly fade out. It's not like the Pioneers will just, that will just keep on going. Then if you wanna do multiples, you can have them all on. And one switch turns them all on. Now, if you hold down shift and mode, what's gonna happen is it's going to switch your Serato effects from the three to the one. So now you have the one effect that you can affect the volume, the parameters, all of those things. Now, if we were to go back for whatever reason and go back to the three, if you wanted to change your Serato effects, cause I know this question came up from somebody. If you wanna change your Serato effects, you have to hold down shift and select and then your Serato effects option is gonna pop up and then you can just scroll down to the one you wanna use and then when it, then just let your finger go right there and now it's set up co correctly. Oh, I forgot to mention, yes, we do have stems, but as I said before, they're not, I'm sure you can MIDI map these. I did not try to MIDI map these, but they are built into your pad modes and mine is set up to sampler. I just wanna I just 
that's Serato. It does what it's supposed to do, does it well, you know, a few glitches here and there, but overall, it did a really good job. It does a good job with DJ also, but DJ does it a little differently. So we're gonna have to show you. I think I'm gonna keep it down so it's easier to see on the, on the ground here. Technically, if I wanted to, I could put my keypad on the top of this and then keep this on my computer over here too. And then that way I still have access to my keyboard, but we're just gonna show you how it is now. If you wanna use your iOS device and receive power, you definitely need to go through the USB-C. I'm pretty sure that you could run right out of the USB-B, but you're not gonna get power to your iPad. This is the only way to get power to your iPad. So once it's in, you will need to make sure that it's switched to the only way, which is the A, and then it's gonna access that. So if we're loading through the track here, your effects work similar to the uh, Serato. If you press the button, it's going to choose the default, which is in this case is the echo. If I turn on the echo, you can see the effects button lights up. This is one thing I will say that gets a, it gets a little confusing. All right, there are two pad modes on your effects. Now let's go over to them and tell you what I'm talking about. You have your default, which is your standard effects, which is like, you know, one, two, and three, okay? But then you have your stem effects, which are in the secondary mode. Now, the stem effects, when you know what to look for, it's easy. However, it's still hard to see sometimes. So if I'm holding down the shift button, you can see the only thing that's lit up is this tap button here. It's going to run all of these in uh, stem EQ. Here's the weird thing about it. Now, uh, again, I'm in STEM EQ. Like so, right? Now, I can turn off STEM EQ just by holding down the shift and then pressing the tap button, STEM EQ goes away, right? Okay, now, I also have the option of doing STEM effects. So if I hold down the shift, and then select either drums, instruments, or microphone. So in this case, we're gonna choose microphone. And then you know, if you're holding down shift, that that's the one that's on, okay? So it's running. Here's the thing. It's not post fader. If I press a button here, uh, holding the shift down, you can see that the little icon changes, okay? Because we have microphone effects, uh, music effects, and then drum effects. And then if I click it one more time, uh, we're back down to just regular effects. And of course, post fader. The problem, the biggest problem, again, not reloop, not the mix on eight. The problem is uh, DJ still using uh, stem effects 1.0. And now we are well beyond it. We got Serato 2.0, we got Virtual DJ 2.0. We're still waiting on this one. So for me specifically, it's harder for me to use the effects because I just don't feel that they sound that good. So I'm always going to be using Serato until they can improve these. If they can improve these, different story altogether, and then obviously improve the way I get music onto my iPad because that's another bit of an issue. All the music on my iPad right now is all streaming. I have nothing, nothing on my iPad whatsoever. It's just, it's just, it just takes longer than it should. I, I think if, if I'm hearing through the grapevine, they're trying to work on that to make it easier. But right now, that's probably the weakest part of this, just being able to like drag and drop music over. It's just not that easy. So until they can fix that, it's going to be the weakness of this controller, which is not really this weakness. It's the iPad. But as far as the controller is concerned, I think it's a good controller. The, the big question that I have, and I'm sure a lot of people have, is that is it too little too late? I mean, the controller was announced two years ago. It took forever for people to get it in their hands. I know people that got it in their hands maybe three to five months ago. Uh, it took me forever to get one to test out. So uh, I don't know exactly what's happening as far as the manufacturing distribution side, but I know that when it was announced, this was a hot ticket item. A lot of people were looking at this, this board and then it just took a while to come out. I don't know if people are gonna be jumping all over this considering there's 
other controllers out there, including from the same umbrella company. Now, again, this is the only controller that I would recommend. <laughs> I'm sure there are controllers that have the slots in them, but it's really the only controller I'd recommend for like a full-time DJ. If you are serious about uh, iPad and you're serious about using Algorithm DJ, well then, in my mind, this really is the only controller that makes sense. Oh, and one of the cool things that you can do with it is because it's dedicated four channels, you can DJ with the four channels here and then switch over to deck four in Serato, load up a track, and now, now you have four decks running at the same time. So you can be running Algorithm DJ on this side and being able to switch off. So that's great. You know, you don't have to worry about necessarily switching the knobs to make it happen. You can do both at the same time and I absolutely love that. So a, a lot of good things in this board, some quirky things. I know the mirrored layout for a lot of people is going to be, you know, kind of a nightmare. Some people just absolutely don't like mirrored layouts. I get it, I understand, it is what it is, but you do get used to it. I know I kind of found my hands kind of rusting on the sides and when I was DJing, you know, just kind of, you know, right up here, just kind of doing this. So, um, you know, for some people it's gonna be an, an annoyance, for other people they're gonna to learn to get used to it and move on. I'm of the mindset that you can get used to it. I am a big fan of the board. I don't have a problem with the board, I just, I just wonder if um, you know other people are gonna share my excitement when it's been out for a while. I mean, one of the biggest fears when you buy any product is, well, if I buy it now, I'm sure they're just gonna come out with their with a mix on nine or a mix on ten, you know, at NAM next year, and then I'm gonna have this older board. So I don't know what the logic is. I don't know. That's just my way of thinking. Maybe other people are different. I don't know. But I do know that it is a good board, and you'll like the board. Uh, it fits in every bag. It's not a it's not a large board. It's all plastic construction with metal build inside. It definitely feels weighty and feels uh, durable. I don't have a problem with this board, guys. It's a good board. Let me know in the chat below what you think about this board. Let me know if you've had any interest or if it's something that you know you've been thinking about. You've been waiting for my review to see if if it's something you want. We will do another uh, to on Thursday. We will break this out again, and then we'll go through it all over. If you have any more questions that you wanna ask, that will be the time to ask. That will be on Thursday and Tech Thursdays. But besides that, I'm a big fan. I'm a fan. I really am a fan. You know, um, I think it's done really well. It just, the question is, are people gonna want it? That's the question. All right, guys, if you found what I said here useful, hit that like button. If you found what I said here really useful, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow me on the Instagrams and the Twitters. Get on my Discord, because that's where we're talking about all things Cleveland Terry, and of course, my DJ Tech Thursday, which happens every Thursday, hopefully, at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on YouTube. Guys, girls, always a pleasure. If I don't talk to you later, we'll talk soon. Peace. All right, guys, if you found what I said here, all right, guys, if you found what I said here, what do I say? All right, guys, if you like what I said, oh, now I remember.